I'm Patrick Bailey with IQS.com. Today is December 14th, 2020. In this video, I'll be going over using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle versus a typical 0.4 millimeter nozzle in a 3D printer. Okay, now for the folks who are new to 3D printing, the typical nozzle size is 0.4 millimeters. So if you bought a new 3D printer like a Prusa i3 Mark III or a Prusa Mini or any other out there, you're typically going to have a 0.4 millimeter nozzles. And I can say for certainty with the Prusas, that's what you get. So 0.4 millimeter nozzle, that's the diameter of the nozzle at the end. So that's how much, that's the, uh, the size of the filament coming out. Now, general idea is if you have a smaller nozzle, like a 0.25, you get less coming out, but you can do more refinement, more fine detail in theory. And a bigger one, like a 0.6 we're talking about, you get less detail, but you get the job done quicker. So I've done a couple of videos on 0.25 nozzles, and let's see, where'd I go? There we are. I'll put a link on here uh, where I did a 0.25 nozzle and shows the result of it. It's pretty interesting, and I think there's some application for things like that. Now we're going the opposite way for a 0.6 millimeter. Um, <clears throat> now why? Now why do you want to do this? Why do I want to do this? Now for me, my actual personal reasons, which I started out, but now I'm changing them, uh, was during all this COVID stuff, I was printing a lot of uh, face shields, but I was using 0.4 we were stacking them. It worked pretty well. We got the job done. And at the time, I was a little cautious of doing anything bigger. Uh, in theory, I, it, we'd get the job done faster, but I was still cautious because I want to make sure things were getting done right and out, and I was unsure of myself. So um, what I did, I, I switched to 0 0.6, and I printed some of these out, and it worked pretty well. I got it to about uh, half the time. So we increased, went from like 50 some odd minutes to get one done to about 25 minutes for this one that I designed. Now, one problem I ran into, though, that I'm not going to solve right now is stacking. Now, for those uh, who may have seen some of my prior videos on this, you can do some stacking where you can separate things, but it turns out uh, I, I did a little few default settings that didn't quite work. I did get one of these apart just fine, but it wasn't as easy. And I'm not going to really revisit that until the need arises. But, um, but after I did this, I was like, oh, it's faster. This can work. I think this is good. Let me take one of my other designs, which I did, uh, a pot, and go see if it's adequate enough. So generally what people want to do is, hey, I want to print faster, not as much detail, but is it going to be good enough? Uh, so with that, for those who are interested, let me go over how what you need to do to swap out your nozzle real quick and also the setting you need to adjust to make sure you can actually do this. It's not just a throw a nozzle on. Okay, first what I've done is I'm using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle I got off Amazon. It's a genuine E3D brass V6 nozzle, and I'll put a link in the show notes here. But uh, make sure you get a good nozzle. And here's the one I'm, I'm using. So you can actually look this up and see. There's plenty of places you can order it from. But here you can see what I'm doing, what I'm using. Now, I'm not going to re-video replace the nozzle because I actually did this early in another video. There's a video I did, Prusa i3, MK3, replace the nozzle. I went in kind of great detail on what was going on. But the basic idea is you need to remove the filament. You need to heat the thing up to about 200 degrees C as is. And then you need to hold on to the heater block somehow not with your hands because you will destroy yourself, you know, get some kind of crescent wrench in there and then remove the nozzle um, and then and then put a new one in. So I went in detail on this video if you want to go into the details, but that's pretty much it. It's not too bad. Once you've done it once, you get the, the gist figured out. And that's the same thing for going from a 0.4 to a 0.6 or 0.25. Um, but the next, now the most next important thing that you may, <laughs> you may overlook, but you really need this, is to update your slicer. So here, if I go into my slicer, there's all these printer settings. And so right now I'm using an i3 Mark III default, which is using a 0.4 millimeter, is adjusted for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But we want to do a 0.6. Now, I like to keep things simple. I like to keep things easy. You could go in here and go crazy and figure out your own configuration, your own settings, and get it working and adjust and tweak and tweak and tweak. I don't want to do that. I want someone to give me something pretty easy. And Prusa does that for you. So what you can do is you go here to configuration, Go to Configuration Wizard, and then what you're going to do, and you'll click Next. What you're going to do is go to the printer, the printers that you have. I have an i3 Mark III here, and what you want to do is you want to subject uh, checkbox all the nozzles you want to use. So here I have 0 0.4, 0 0.25, 0 0.6, and then click Finish. And what that will do is it will bring in the different settings that you need uh, for this 0 0.6, so that you have everything kind of done for you by default. Um, so with that, let me do a really quick demo here. Let me see. Oh, I didn't have it open. There we go. Uh, so a real quick demo that I'm really going to do here. It's interesting to look at the numbers here. 
So if I take this square pot, which I've done before in another video, and I'll put a link to that too somewhere. Uh, if I take that and I do a typical, what I did last time, I3 Mark 3, which is a 0.4 nozzle, PLA, and go to, in this case, I did a 0.2 quality. Uh, and over here, if you go to printer settings, you'll see that I am using, oh, print settings, somewhere in here. There's a 0.4. That, I messed myself up. Anyway, ignore all that. Uh, if I go here and slice this, and this is what I did before, we'll see that we'll get, and you'll see here, this is interesting. See, I'm getting 22 hours and 32 minutes, which is roughly what I was doing before on my, on my last video when I did this. And I'm getting 282 grams, uh, or 0.28 kilograms, at a 15% infill. Now here's what's interesting. Now if I click on this, and I merely go to the 0.6 nozzle that's been added for the presets, click on that, you'll see everything changes. It goes to a 0.3 millimeter quality, but if I go down to a 0.2 detail to kind of compare apples to apples, and hit slice, we'll see I get an improvement once it gets here, but there's also something interesting that I get an increased, vo an increased mass on how much uh, it's gonna use. So here we went from 22 hours to 15 hours, so we're much faster uh, by a bit, but also we went to 327 grams. Now, if you look at this, you'll see, I'll go down and see a path here. We have this 15% infill. Now this path didn't change much because of the 15% infill, it's not smart enough to adjust too much. So it's kind of doing the same lines. If it's doing the same lines, especially the same outer lines, uh, it's going to use more material because it's shooting out more materials. As a result, it actually, for the same set of info on the same parameters, uh, perimeters, you're going to have more mass. I didn't think about that. Uh, when I went to start to make this video, I went and measured the weight on this. and I was like, oh, wow, it's bigger. I didn't think about that. But now what I'm actually going to do, what I actually did do, is I went all the way to 0.4 millimeter draft because, hey, I want it to go fast. I want it to, I'm not too worried about the looks by comparison. And hit slice. And now you'll see, we went down to eight hours. Well, a little less than nine hours, but we also bumped a little bit more at 344 grams. So it actually got a little bigger. So it may be something to play with on that infill, depending on what you're doing or perimeters, depending on what you're doing, because the perimeters are gonna be a little fatter. Uh, so you need to get that. Um, also, one last thing is once you export the G-code and print it, you can go print it just fine. But like on my i3 Mark III, the i3 Mark III has a setting where it knows shouldn't say it knows, where you told it what nozzle it's, it's currently set at. And so you get an error to say, oh, this G code's for 0.6, but you say I have a 0.4, do you still want to proceed? Well, you can just proceed. Uh, or you can actually go into the settings and you can change it to a 0.6 uh, nozzle, and then you won't get that error. But then you'll get the error back when you go to a 0.4 unless you switch it back. So you don't, you can't skip over the error, but if you want to, you can accept, you can change it so you don't get that error when it pops up. Uh, now with that, let me go over the numbers on this print, and then we'll kind of go show it in detail what the results were. Okay, now here's the video I did before where I did the 0.4 millimeter nozzle and did it um, at 0.2 layer height, and it worked pretty good. My wife's been using these pots. Uh, but now with this one, we're doing the 0.6 nozzle, and we're doing a 0.4 millimeter uh, height and doing, you know, the speed. And so as a result, let's go over the numbers. So in this case, it took 11 hours and 28 minutes to print the way I did it. It took 9.3 cents with electricity, and it also weighs uh, 0.324 kilograms at $20 per kilograms. That comes out to uh, $6.48 cents worth of material, and total cost was $6.58. But with that, let me leave these numbers up and do a quick comparison to my last video. Now, my last video, this one, 11 hours, 28 minutes. The last one, 21 hours, 28 minutes. So a big, huge time savings. Electricity, uh, 9.3 cents. This one, 12.6 cents, sorry. This one, 9.3 cents. Last one, 12.6 cents. So, you know, not a few pennies because it, it ran longer. It has to keep that heat bed going. But overall, a few pennies difference, not much to, to talk about. Now, the big difference is the weight. This is 0.324 kilograms, and it was 0.262 kilograms. So that's a big difference in weight, which affects the cost. So this cost, this one is $6.58. The last one was $5.37. So we're talking more than a dollar more because of the material. So it may be something you want to play around with um, and fiddle with the infill percentage to kind of get that number more 
closely aligned because you are putting out more material. Mm-hmm. But um, it's only a buck. I don't know. You might want to play with that. I can see myself using this from time to time, uh, like for these pots. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm not in a time crunch. You know, if this was my business and I had to go pump a bunch of these out, maybe I might consider this. But in this case, I, I don't know. This, this For this, probably has an application. Uh, but for the most part, I'm not that concerned about a lot of speed. So I'm okay this takes twice as long because I don't, I'm not printing things out as a profession. I'm not selling things. Maybe if I was, then yeah, now you're talking about uh, being able to do two of these per day versus one, then something to think about. Uh, but with that, uh, would I? I can see using this. I can see using the 0.25 sometimes. I can see using the 0.6 sometimes, but I can see the vast majority of the time, I'm probably going to stick with 0.4 unless something's really big and I don't need the details. Oh, but with that, I am working on one right now that I'm curious about. Uh, last year, shouldn't say, well, yeah, last year, last year when I was at a homeschool conference, uh, one thing that was fun to print out for people to watch was I was printing out or attempting to print out was a um, Julius Caesar bust. And this Julius Caesar bust would print out, but it would take so long that by the time it was nearly done, well, it only had about halfway done during the conference because it took too long. So now I'm curious, I'm running a test right now, if the results look good and it can print in eight hours or nine hours, uh, that might be worthwhile as a nice demonstration in a conference because they can see something big get done rather quick uh, during the time of the conference. Um, and they can also see, I can share the difference of detail. I could print out one fine, print this one out not so fine, and they can see the difference. And that might make, um, and that, that might be a game changer for some people because some people, they want to print something really in, in detail, you know, like the miniatures. Some people, I want to print out a tool or a pot I don't need the detail, so let me get the job done faster. So, hmm. it's got its place. It's got its place. So with that, let me go show the results. Okay, here's one of the ones we did before with a 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle and a 0 0.2 height that has been used as a planter for a while. And now my normal Lazy Susan has a cake on it right now. So I have to use the chair that I just fixed. So you can kind of see the details on this. It's um, nothing to write home about, but it's fine. There's nothing much going on here, so it, it, it works just fine. But now here's the one with the point six. Come on here. And, you know, if you look on the edges, you can see it's not quite as nice on the edges by comparison. Um, and also, I do have a line, I don't know if it shows up, about in the second layer. Probably shows I cruise around. But I think that was due, I had a filament change right about that time, and I think that might be the result. So I don't think that's normal that that, that occurred. But overall, you know, if you pay attention, you can see there's some differences. But for this level of detail, it's a square pot. It's pretty easy. I don't think my wife will really notice you know, she's, she's shaking her head no. So, um, so if she wants a bunch more of these, I think, yeah, you know, it doesn't take but a moment to switch out the nozzles. And you could do a bunch like this. And, um, but also I might fiddle with the interesting thing because the, like I said before, my wife gets to hear this, she didn't hear it before, is with the same infill percentage, 15%, which says, hey, 15% of this should be the same. Uh, we're still doing the same perimeters. This has two perimeters. This has two perimeters. But also that infill, I don't think it changed the lines very much. I'd have to go look in more detail. As a result, there's more mass in here. So this actually weighs more. So it has more filament. So this actually cost about a buck more to print because of the filament. Uh, but you can adjust that. So I could have done fewer perimeters. I could have changed the infill to a lower to get the same number. And is that worthwhile? May or may not be. Um, so it depends on what you're printing. So... But just know that, hey, if you just do the same settings and you do the same infill, same perimeters, it's going to weigh more, which makes sense because it's following the same lines and it's outputting more. So, yep, there you go, 0 0.6 millimeter. It's probably worthwhile to have one of those around for things like this. I'm working through my stack of video ideas I have. 
Next one is going to be a simple way to remove the bottom section of an STL file in the Prusa Slicer. Until then, happy 3D printing to all y'all out there.